Eshkobar, the world's greatest carry wizard, and this is lesson two. If you haven't heard lesson one, you might go do that instead. Anyway, this is lesson two on fighting arts philosophy, a series by your old uncle Eshkobar. I mean, who would know more about fighting arts than a wizard, right? <laughs> Here's why. <clears throat> In this short episode, I'm going to talk about how wrong teachers and icons and role models get the basic philosophy of the fighting arts. That's right. I'm going to start with the Einstein of the fighting arts, Bruce Lee. Hi, Bruce. I know you're listening because you're really wrapped up in yourself and I'm talking about you. So wherever the Chinese underworld is, somebody's got a big screen TV and you're beating up the other ghosts so you can watch what Eshkar is about to tell you. Right? Ain't you? I think so. So here's the deal. Bruce Lee is considered by many to be one of the great martial arts philosophers. Those are people that don't read much. And Bruce Lee is considered by many to be one of the greatest fighting artists of all times. And that's variously appendable. And let me describe the first part before I discuss the second part. The first part is that he understands the martial arts better than anybody else. And biz bag, right away, right away. In the first place, they're not called the martial arts if you want to talk about it properly. They're called the fighting arts. Boxing and wrestling are fighting arts. They aren't martial arts. Martial arts are military arts. There are things that armies do. Yeah. Camp hygiene, logistics, march order, security, screening, policing, scouting. These are the martial arts. And you'll find them very well discussed in Sun Tzu's Art of War. He doesn't discuss the fighting arts. Karate, boxing, Taekwondo, huh? Tang Soo Do. <laughs> Thanks to you boys. Doesn't talk Kali, doesn't talk Denbe. None of that's discussed in his work, Sun Tzu's work. Sun Tzu's work is for the generals and the commanders. Sun Tzu covers the martial arts, the military arts, how to hold an army together, how to make it do the right things. Those are the martial arts. Whereas Bruce Lee, Funakoshi, who I talked about in my last episode, are fighting artists. There's a big difference. Think about it. You'll see I'm right. I'm often right because I'm an alternate thinker. I don't just follow the ass of the horse in front of me. I might. I still am. But sometimes I don't. So here's what I want to talk about. Bruce Lee would say all kinds of like pseudo philosophical things that if you don't think them through, they sound so cool. But he didn't understand them. He was just parroting cool things he had read, some of which he was considering himself trying to like work through them. But he wasn't a philosopher. He was a fighter and an actor. It's possible you can be both. Not like Ron Reagan. <laughs> hey, that's a whole oh, trying to be an actor and a president. When anybody asked him about his experiences in the war, he'd tell them the plots of the movies he'd started because he had blended reality with fantasy, something really bad for a president. You would have just seen that not long ago. So anyway, Bruce Lee said something that everybody here has heard. And, and if you're a karateka, if you are a practitioner of fighting arts, you've heard this and it was presented to you in some totally bullshit way so it wouldn't make any sense because it didn't make any sense when he said it in the first place. It came from the Tao, which is a system of philosophy. Yeah, it is. And the Tao's got some good stuff in it. So good that Buddhism stole a lot of it and says, it's hard. Anyway. And here's what the Tao says. Be like Wafa. Seems simple, doesn't it? Tell me what it means. Go ahead and listen. Yeah. And when Bruce Lee said it, it meant something, didn't it, to you? Deep 
inside, Bruce Lee has said something philosophical to me. The inner child is holding his toes. But it didn't communicate anything, did it? What does it mean? What does be like water mean? Yeah, I didn't think you knew. And I wouldn't have known either. I didn't read Dallas philosophy. God, am I boring. Dallas philosophy had taught somebody who then taught Bruce Lee, we hope it was Ip Man, but probably wasn't, because Ip Man made a lot of mistakes in terms of this Dallas philosophy. But it was this, be like water. Seems so cool, huh? Be like water, dude, yeah. You mean like frozen water? You mean like boiling water? You mean like what? Be wet? What do you mean? What does that mean? I'm gonna give you guys 10 seconds to think about what that means literally. Be like water. <laughs> We're done, okay. Here's what it means. It comes from the Tao and it means blend into any social situation with the caveat because then you won't need to duke it out with people. Cure the fighting arts by learning the simplest Taoist philosophy, which is social gold. Be like water, my friend. People are all nodding. Well, if you're standing in line, nod with them. Right? People are shuffling. Well, you shuffle too. You know why? Because if you don't, you're the one that sticks out. Think about what I'm saying. As a person who sticks out very well, which is why I started zipping my pants up. Ask Natalie, she knows. This is the A material, people. It's pretty evident that the more you are kind of like the people around you, the less they notice you in a way like them. Oh, you see what I mean? Because you don't stand out. You're not a foreigner. You're not non-Japanese. You're not non-Han. You're not, you know, you're not the Northern Nigerians. <laughs> That's how it is. So instead, you kind of act like people around you. So in an immigrant group, which has happened many times in many lands, but I'm gonna talk about in the United States of America as opposed to the Canada of America, really, because we're bigger than the United States, I think. If we're not, we should be. <laughs> we discovered the Northwest Passage, not you. <laughs> and everybody knew about the Panama Canal because Teddy Roosevelt made a big stink about it. And when it comes to Teddy Roosevelt and big stinks, I'll talk about that in the appropriate moment. But for now, we want to talk about this philosophy, be like water. All right. When you move an immigrant group into a new area, into a, 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 an established area, you create huge social tensions. One of which is xenophobia. The people that were living there first doesn't want to believe that you're equals because they see you as taking away economic opportunity. That Chinaman stole my job because he'll shine shoes for two cents and I charge five. That bastard, I'll kill him. That's how people think. That's how white people used to think. And I know it's how Japanese people used to think. Ask China. So xenophobia is a big deal for moving into a new area. Those people hate you. They hate you because you smell funny. They hate you because you look funny. They hate you because you dress funny. They hate you because you are not being like water. There's a little martial arts, a little fighting arts, a little true uber philosophy for everybody out there. Be like water, my friend. Now, if people are causing atrocities around you, it's a bad idea to be like water with them, ain't it? That's why any philosophy requires critical thinking. And usually on a case-by-case -case basis, especially for the exceptional cases. Hmm? When people are I've already blogged on this before, so I'm not going to refer to it. But when people are committing atrocities around you, it's good for you to get out of the way. 
Because otherwise, they're going to wonder why you're not being like water. And that makes you a them. Think about what I'm saying. If you have ears, here. If you have eyes, go watch porno. So anyway, <clears throat> that was my lesson for today. That not only do you have your karate wrong, you have your Bruce Lee wrong. Even Bruce Lee had Bruce Lee wrong. But Eshkelar has it right. Be like water, my friend. Be like the people around you. Give off the vibes that they give off. And then when the people come through looking for somebody to pick on, they won't see you. You won't have to fight. It's not perfect. No philosophy is perfect. But it's pretty good. So, one more time. Be like water, my friend. It has nothing to do with karate and everything to do with avoiding having to use karate. Thank you. I'm Eshkelar. This has been Lesson 2, and you've gotten your martial arts wrong.